Today, let us study the Word of God together with the sermon titled, Mark of God and Mark of the Beast. Let us open to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 1. And I saw a beast coming out of the sea. He had ten horns and seven heads, with ten crowns on his horns, and on each head a blasphemous name. The beast I saw resembled a leopard, but had feet like those of a bear, and a mouth like that of a lion. The dragon. The dragon is the devil, Satan. It was Satan who gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority. The Bible records that the beast who received its power from Satan will give all people a mark demonstrating that they follow him and worship him. Let's move on to verse 16. He also forced everyone, small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on his right hand or on his forehead. He forced everyone to receive the mark of the beast on their hands or on their foreheads so that no one could buy or sell unless he had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. This is the way that the name of the beast was written on people's right hands and on their foreheads. It is recorded that he made all these marks on those who worship the beast. Let's move on to Matthew chapter 28. Chapter 28, verse 18. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. The Bible records in the book of Revelation chapter 13 that the beast puts his mark on the hands and foreheads of his followers. In Matthew chapter 28, we can see that God, too, gave His name to those who believe in Him. God appointed them to be baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, so that they can receive the mark of God. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 16, it says, They will receive the mark of the beast on their right hand or on their foreheads. What will happen to those who receive the mark of the beast? Let us confirm this matter by going to Revelation chapter 14. In Revelation chapter 14, verse 11, it is written, And the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever. There is no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and his image, or for anyone who receives the mark of his name. Whoever receives the mark of the beast's name has no rest day or night. Doesn't this mean that they will suffer the eternal punishment of hell? Nevertheless, there are also various circumstances in which God gives His mark. Let's go to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Let's see how God grants the mark of God to His people and how the mark of the beast will be given to mankind. At the time of the Exodus, God's people received God's precious mark. Let's go to Exodus chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 11. This is how you are to eat it, with your cloak tucked into your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On that same night, I'll pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn, both men and animals, and I'll bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood will be, what will the blood be? A sign for you on the houses where you are. In other words, this will serve as God's mark. Let's see what the mark is. And when I see the blood... I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. What did God say about the people who put the blood of the Passover lamb on the sides and tops of the door frames? 
God commanded the Israelites to put the blood of the Passover lamb on the sides and tops of the doorframes. By this, didn't He let the destroying angels know where God's people who revere and believe in Him lived? It will be a sign, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you. Then what about those who didn't have this sign? It says that every firstborn, both men and animals, in every house in Egypt had been destroyed. Through this event, which took place 3,500 years ago in the book of Exodus chapter 12, we can see the power of the Passover when God fully protected His people. Didn't God make this covenant with His people as the sign representing the house where God's people dwell? God said, Do not destroy the houses that have the blood on the sides and tops of the door frames, but destroy all the houses that do not have the blood of the Passover lamb. A sign has such an important meaning. God uses His mark, but Satan too uses His mark. Those who have the mark of Satan, no matter how many people have it, will be tormented in the burning sulfur of hell without rest, day or night. However, God promised to save and protect from all disasters those who have the mark of God. Now, let us move to Exodus chapter 13. When we read chapter 13, verse 8, it is written, On that day, tell your son, I do this because of what the Lord did for me when I came out of Egypt. This observance will be for you like a sign on your hand and a reminder on your forehead. Here, what did God command them to do? God said this would be a sign for them. This will be a sign on your forehead that the law of the Lord is to be on your lips. For the Lord brought you out of Egypt with His mighty hand. You must keep this ordinance at the appointed time, year after year. Therefore, God granted the Passover as a sign of a covenant between God and His people by which He promised to protect them from disasters. Where should the Passover, the sign of the covenant, be placed on us? In Revelation chapter 7, there is a sign to escape disasters, which is placed on our foreheads. Chapter 7, verse 1. After this I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds of the earth to prevent any wind from blowing on the land or on the sea or on any tree. Then I saw another angel coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Here, do no harm means that disasters will not be poured out upon them. Through what did God command that disasters should not come upon His people? God puts a seal on the foreheads of His people. Can't a seal also be likened to a stamp? God will place His stamp upon His people. Whose stamp is this? It is God's stamp. In other words, it is God's seal. This seal does not come from an individual or the president of a company. This seal of God comes from the east, from where the sun rises, and it is put on the foreheads of God's people, God's servants. Just as God is diligently putting His seal on His people right now, Satan is also diligently putting the mark of the beast on all mankind. We didn't receive the mark of the beast, but the mark of God. Everyone, this itself is such an amazing and joyful blessing. Now, Satan is working hard on placing his mark on all mankind. He is placing his mark on mankind through the observance of Christmas and Sunday worship. It is said in this age, God puts his seal with God's holy name to acknowledge those who have become his people through the Passover and the observance of His commandments. 
coming up from the east, having the seal of the living God. He called out in a loud voice to the four angels who have been given power to harm the land and the sea. Do not harm the land or the sea or the trees until we put a seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. Never hurt these people. Do not harm them. God's people can be completely protected even if the winds are released only after receiving this seal. Here it says, put a seal on their foreheads. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel 9 also mentions the matter of putting a seal on their foreheads. Chapter 9, verse 3. Now the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim, where it had been, and moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen, who had the writing kit at his side, and said to him, Go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the foreheads of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. These people lamented over the detestable things that were happening and wondered, Is it really okay to do this? God ordered to put a mark on the foreheads of these people. God commanded to put a mark on their foreheads, just as is recorded in Revelation chapter 7. Let us look at verse 5. As I listened, he said to the others, Follow him through the city and kill, without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter old men, young men and maidens, women and children. But do not touch anyone who has the mark. To those who have the mark on their foreheads, God commanded that no destruction should ever come near them, because they are to be protected. God places a mark on His people in many different ways. God puts the mark with His commandments and also with His name. He puts the mark of God on His people in various ways. According to the book of Revelation chapter 13, the beast also puts his mark on mankind through his own commandments and with his name. The beast is using various schemes in order to place a mark on his people. Today, when we look at the Sabbath and the feasts that we are keeping, other people might think, aren't all worship services the same? They may take this lightly, But God said that even today, at this moment, He would mark those in Zion as His children because they keep the feasts and the Sabbath. Isn't this why it is explained in the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 that the Sabbath is also a sign of God? Chapter 20, verse 12. Also I gave them my Sabbaths, as, what is it to them? A sign between us, so that they would know that I, the Lord, made them holy. It says, God gave them the regulation of the Sabbath as a sign to show that they are His people and that He will be their God. Let's take a look at the difference between those who received the mark of the beast and those who received the mark of God. What is the meaning of the feasts? the Sabbath, all of God's commandments, the new name of God and the age of the Holy Spirit, and the name of the new Jerusalem. God separates those who have the mark of God from those who do not have the mark of God. This is seen in how He strictly separated the houses in Egypt that had the Passover lamb's blood from those that did not have it. God cast upon one side a punishment and upon the other, the grace of salvation. Since Egypt represents this sinful world, there will be people who will have the mark of God and people who have the mark of the beast on God's last judgment day. In this way, those who have the mark of God will receive the grace of salvation, and those who have the mark of the beast will be sent to eternal hell. We can confirm that God separates and divides these two groups. Let's turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 19. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured 
and with him the false prophet, who had performed the miraculous signs on his behalf. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest of them were killed with a sword that came out of the mouth of the rider on the horse, and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. What will be the end result of those who receive the mark of the beast? Where will those who deluded the people that had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image be thrown alive into? They will be thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This will be their end result. They are all destined to suffer the punishment of hell. Let's move on to chapter 13. Chapter 13, verse 6. He opened his mouth to blaspheme God and to slander his name in his dwelling place and those who live in heaven. He was given power to make war against the saints and to conquer them. And he was given authority over every tribe, people, language, and nation. All inhabitants of the earth will. What will they do? They will worship the beast, all whose names have not been written in the book of life belonging to the Lamb that was slain from the creation of the world. Then, since they worship the beast, whose mark must they have received? They have all received the mark of the beast. In the book of Revelation, chapter 19, God clearly teaches and awakens us to the fact that those who receive the mark of the beast will be thrown into the everlasting punishment of hell. At times, we tend to regard the feasts, the Sabbath, and all worship services as simply ordinary worship services. However, the truth is that we are constantly receiving the sign of God through them. Then, aren't the regulations, the laws and commands of God, the sign through which God is testifying, they are my people? Let's confirm this once again in Revelation chapter 22. Chapter 22, verse 7. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is, who is blessed? He who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. Then, what is it that is prophesied in this book? This book, the Bible, teaches us that if we receive the mark of the beast, we will be tormented forever and ever, and that we will be saved when we receive the mark of God. Doesn't it? According to Revelation chapter 7, where will God put His mark? Doesn't it say that it will be placed on the foreheads of God's servants? Then, since it is the seal of God, whose name must be written on God's stamp? My name is engraved on my seal. Whose name is engraved on your seal? Your name is engraved there. Yet it is God's name which is written on God's seal. What is God's name written on His seal? The name of God is a name that is coming from a country in the East. In other words, it is not the name of God in the age of the Son, nor the name of God in the age of the Father. Rather, it is the name of God in the age of the Holy Spirit. Regarding the name of God in the age of the Holy Spirit, Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 17. Chapter 22, verse 17. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. In this last age, the age of the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother came to this earth as the Spirit and the Bride to lead all mankind to salvation and eternal life. Since God who is calling us is the Spirit and the Bride, it is not one God, but two. Therefore, let's move on to the book of Revelation chapter 3 to see which names of God are recorded in the Bible as the names that are to be written on our foreheads. This is the most important sign to us who are living in the age of the Holy Spirit that testifies that we are God's children. Let's see verse 12. 
Him who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven from my God. Whose name is it? The name of the new Jerusalem, which is coming down out of heaven. According to Galatians chapter 4, verse 26, the Jerusalem that is above is free, and she is, who is she? She is our mother. Therefore, the name of God the Mother, and who else's name? It says that He will also write on Him the new name of Jesus. It is written in Revelation chapter 7 that God's seal will be put on the foreheads of those who will be saved. The God who grants us salvation is not singular. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come and receive the water of life. Thus, the name of the Spirit that is testified to as my new name, and the name of the Bride that is recorded as the name of the New Jerusalem, will be a very important sign for God's people in the last days. That's why he said, Never touch anyone who has this name. I do not want them to be harmed. In this age, there are people whom God has given His new name and the name of the New Jerusalem and has sealed them with these names. These people are the protagonists of the prophecy who will be able to win the battle against Satan forever. Let's take a look at the scene in Revelation chapter 12. Chapter 12, verse 17. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring, those who obey God's commandments and hold to the testimony of Jesus. And the dragon stood on the shore of the sea. The dragon is Satan. Those who keep God's commandments are those who have the mark of God. The Bible says, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. Isn't this recorded in the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15? The woman is the mother of all mankind. It was Adam who gave her the name, meaning, life. Doesn't this woman here refer to Eve, who is the mother of all the living? What happened between the spiritual dragon, the devil, and the spiritual Eve. The dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to make war against the rest of her offspring. The characteristic of the rest of the woman's offspring is that they always obey God's commandments. This is the mark. The way God's people worship God is different from how the world worships the beast. The way and the times when God's people worship along with the names of God that they invoke are completely different than those which are used in the world to worship the beast. In order to differentiate between them, God made a plan. If God continues to use the name of Jesus later on, it would be difficult to distinguish God's people from the people of the devil. So what did God do? God gave mankind a new name. What is the reason? It is to distinguish between them. In order to separate God's people from those who are not God's people, God gave us a new name. God has separated those who believe in God the Father and God the Mother, and who have the new name and the name of New Jerusalem from those who do not. This is the amazing plan that God established. This is why God gave us the Sabbath, the Passover, His new name, and ultimately led us to believe in the glorious name of the new Jerusalem. To those who have received the mark of Satan, God said, they will suffer in the lake of fire forever and ever. The smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. To God's people, he said, they will reign as the royal priests forever and ever in the glorious world where there is no more death or mourning or pain. 
Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 22, verse 1. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb, down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city, and His servants will serve Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. For the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Those who can come to this kind of grace are those who have the mark of God. Those who have received the mark of God will be granted all these blessings. However, when we read the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 19, God said to those who had received the mark of the beast, whoever received the mark of the beast and worshipped his idol, not a single one of them will be spared, and they'll be tormented in the fiery furnace forever and ever. When I saw people diagnosed with COVID-19 being interviewed on TV, they said that they were in great pain and that they had never experienced this kind of suffering caused by a disease. Whenever I hear that, I think to myself that we must never go to hell. People are crying out from even the small amount of pain they experience on this earth then what will happen to them when the smoke of their torment rises forever and ever? Nevertheless, people in this world regard going to heaven and hell as insignificant. They ignorantly say, if I can't go to heaven, I can just go to hell. Everyone, isn't there a saying that goes, be careful what you ask for, it might come true? We have to be careful with the words we speak. In order to go to the glorious kingdom of heaven that father and mother have prepared, we must diligently keep the feasts and obey all the decrees and regulations that God has given us. We must always be proud and confident because we have received the mark of God. In order to blot out the mark of God, Satan persecutes God's people who are a minority of the population. He also changed the times and laws to make God's people fail to keep them. However, as we can see in Revelation chapter 12, God's people never fail to keep God's commandments and firmly believe in Jesus until the end. They are walking the path of prophecy, which father and mother have granted with the mark of God on their foreheads. Who is it that is in our heart, in our faith, and also in our mind? Won't the people who firmly believe in Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother, and who also believe in His new name and the name of the new Jerusalem, be those who are able to follow the path of Christ wherever they lead them and go to heaven? asking that no one will be left behind in walking the path of Christ. I give glory to God once again for their grace, for granting us the mark of God and guiding us, so that we would not receive the mark of the beast. Hoping that you have received much grace, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.